In the past few weeks, when my viewership skyrocketed thanks to Birdkeeper Toby, a lot of you saw my first video on the new 151, and apparently you loved it. I've had so many positive comments about those starter designs, and a lot of you have asked to see more. Now, I don't want to be one to disappoint, so today I will show you what we did with the early game Pokemon. The concept of the Caterpie family had two origins, so I'll actually begin by telling you about Metapod. OG Metapod's face has an interesting history. Nowadays we're used to seeing it like this. This is the official art, and all of the recent sprites and models have it like this as well. But back in yellow, it was actually shown facing the other way, and there was official art of that too. And somehow they both seem natural. In this view, you have sad eyes and that plated area that sort of looks like a muzzle. But if you flip it around, you get angry eyes and a sharp nose. A related issue is that Caterpie has these enormous, comically big eyes that just do not look natural. They're based on swallowtail caterpillars, but these aren't the eyes. They would be somewhere over here. So we took all of this and came up with an idea. That Caterpie and Metapod would have two faces. A real one with small beady eyes, and a fake one with big menacing eye patterns on their backs to ward off predators. That way we preserve Caterpie's huge eyes and both sides of Metapod, but in a way that's more realistic. We also changed Metapod's shape and colors a bit to better match Caterpie. But Butterfree was really difficult. If you're familiar with the theory that Venomoth and Butterfree got swapped, then you know that Butterfree actually shares more traits with Venonat than with Caterpie or Metapod. If you look at the details, Caterpie and Metapod look like they're based on swallowtail butterflies. Butterfree, though, looks more like it's based on butterflies from a completely separate family, Pieridae. And that was something we wanted to fix. Which left us with a conundrum. Do we make relatively small changes so that it continues to look like Butterfree, or do we completely redesign it from scratch so that we can make it match our vision for it? It was a scary choice to make, but we decided to take almost nothing from the original design and come up with a completely new Butterfree. And to my surprise, Butterfree actually became, and still is, our all-time most popular post. What little we kept from Butterfree is in the shape of the head, torso, and feet. The rest is all new. We gave it wings that are more like the swallowtail butterflies that Caterpie and Metapod are based on, including, of course, the signature swallowtails, the long bits at the ends of the lower wings. And then we gave it the colors of Caterpie, including what was supposed to be a false eye pattern on the backs of the wings, but that ended up also looking like Pokeballs. Not planned, but happy accident, as Bob Ross would say. Redesigning the Weedle family was a completely different experience. The main thing is that even though Beedrill's name, both in English and in Japanese, clearly references bees, it really looks more like a wasp or a hornet, which are actually quite different from bees in many ways. So we decided to make Beedrill more bee-like. We changed its wing shapes and gave it chunkier limbs. We also gave it these shields on the hips that are supposed to look like pollen baskets, a structure that some honeybees have on their legs. The stingers take some cues from Mega Beedrill, and the stripes on them are meant to emphasize the drill part. We worked backward for Weedle and Kakuna. Weedle doesn't particularly look like a bee larva, but if we had gone that way, Weedle's design would have been pretty boring, so we mostly kept its original look. We just made it shorter and gave it some of that bee fluff, even though bee larvae don't have it. It was just to tie the family together better, which is why Kakuna gets it too. Bee pupa almost look like fat, but otherwise fully formed bees. You can even see the limbs on them. And since Kakuna actually had arms in its red and blue sprites and other early art, we decided to bring that back. Now it has something to poison sting with again. Another family that seems misnamed is the Pidgey line. All of their names reference pigeons, but they really look more like birds of prey. Pidgey in particular looks a lot like an osprey. And Pidgeot also has some subtle hints in its design to Horus, the Egyptian god. But there are actually multiple versions of Horus that, even though they have some similarities, are actually considered separate gods. There is the Horus we all know, but there is also a version that is a child, called Horus the Younger. So we decided to take all of this to inform our design of the Pidgey line. Pidgey itself begins as just a bird. There really isn't more to it than that. We did change the body shape a bit to look more like the pigeons that they're named after, but the coloration comes from Young Osprey. 
When it evolves into Pidgeotto, it becomes the Pokémon embodiment of Horus the Younger, the one that's a child. It still has mostly the coloration of a juvenile osprey, but the tail feathers and the long hair-like feathers on its head are now red and white. This is to represent the Skent, the Egyptian crown that combines the red crown of Lower Egypt with the white crown of Upper Egypt. It's something that Horus wears in many of his versions. The curl of the red feather and the pose that I drew Pidgeotto in are both references to Horus the Younger specifically. He's often depicted with a curl on the right side of his face and with a finger to his mouth, which are supposed to be signs of youth. But then Pidget is much more Horus the Elder, the one that we're more familiar with. We took a lot of elements from Mega Pidget, as well as the general body shape and plumage of adult Osprey, since it's always bothered me how bulky OG Pidget looks. Its body is too big and its wings are disproportionately small, but Mega Pidget is great, so that's what we used as a base. Whereas in Pidgeotto the scant reference was really just in the colors, with Pidget, we shaped the hair to look as much like the skent as possible, while still remaining fairly hair-like. And of course, we changed the black marking around the eyes to explicitly reference the Eye of Horus, which represents not only Horus, but royal power in general. So if you look at the entire family, it's like Pidgey grows from being just a young little bird to a full-on god or a king of the birds. And Pidget is, to this day, one of my favorite redesigns of the whole series. But that's all I have for you today. I will bring you more episodes soon, but if you want to look ahead, you can check out the new 151 on Tumblr. The link's in the doobly-doo. We've done up to Ponyta and Rapidash. At least I hope I have time to finish Ponyta before this video comes out, but if not, we've definitely gone up to Golem. And please also check out Infinipede, my collaborator and co-designer with this series. Links to their work are also below the fold. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed this video, and subscribe if you're new here. I'm Umbreon Libris, and I'll see you in the next chapter. Don't die, please. Okay. Definitely not while we're recording. I feel so loved.